Namaste. I'm Jaya Palashri from Kamskara Healing. Hi. I thank you for joining and being part of this. This is my son Dushyan. This is episode 4 for our conversation pertaining to the open communication that we need to have and what are the various options that we could choose and have. So thank you for the feedback. It's been amazing. The feedback is what keeps us going and also the kind of various options we've got. Um, so not talking and when we're speaking about open communication, we spoke about how essential it is for teenage kids to have an open communication and how parents have to be there for the children. So we've got into a lot of depth talk, we've got a lot of questions pouring in. We've been responding to it and... Uh, uh, so in the process, as we're going through everything, uh, today we're talki talking about, yesterday we spoke about bullying and uh, how it could really affect and how important no matter what it is to reach out to an elder and seek support and help. Today I'm talking about depression. So yes, my son, I want you to talk about depression and what you have to say. Come a little front, you're not seen clearly because of the lighting. Okay. So. Um I am not very qualified to talk about depression. No, we are not talking as qualified professionals. No, we are just like talking about a teenager dealing with it. Yeah, again, yeah. so I am not very qualified to speak about it particularly because I am not, uh, I am not very educated in this particular field. So whatever I will be saying is based off what I believe and what I feel and it's not always accurate. A true psychiatrist and a true I mean, a real psychiatrist would be able to help you with that, but um, it is quite. I know for a fact that uh, depression in the teenagers is quite common, and um, I myself have experienced a myriad of symptoms of depression, and I think it started maybe when I must have been around fourteen, and yeah, I've never particularly been diagnosed with depression. I've never like been to a psychiatrist to get uh, diagnosed with uh, depression after like I was 14 or 15 I'm not gone I've not met with the psychiatrist in like the recent years and uh, which is why whatever I say is purely symptomatic is purely based on symptoms and uh, this is of course nothing confirmed so to summarize yeah it is quite common in teenagers from what I've read and from what I've heard and it's something which is uh, which there's this major stigma about uh, even till today like yeah, and I, there, is, there is a major stigma and we have spoken about it and uh, uh, whether depression in a teenager or an adult, a depression is a depression and everybody go through it one time or the other in their life and there could be various reasons why they're going to go through it. It could be loss of job, it could be stress, it could be a sudden loss in the family which could be death and also teenagers have various issues when they go through it, it could be examination, it could be various kind of other reasons. What are the reasons why you, what are the reasons you've gone through it? I'm not talking about teenagers. I have again, I can't confirm that I've gone through depression because I've never been diagnosed with it, but at the same time, I've experienced quite a few symptoms and I think majority of the symptoms have come in due to like, like a myriad of factors to be precise, to be honest. Like, hmm. Um, it could be from my school environment to my social environment to like just various factors which have all played a role. So I can't pinpoint and say there was this one particular incident or one particular event. And uh, again, those th I, these are what have made me feel symptoms of uh, of depression. I can't say I had depression because I was never diagnosed with it. And no, you were not diagnosed with it, so we cannot say that you had depression. But I still remember in 2020 when we when we were dealing with COVID and for quite some time you were in the room by yourself, closing the door, closing the curtains. Yeah, I feel I became quite, I, I quite isolated. I mean, I isolated yeah, you myself. completely isolated yourself, and I and saw you saw this for about I think uh, two three days, and I kept coming knocking on the door trying to ask you to come. Two three out. weeks actually. No. no. It was it went on, no, it went no, on. you went on, on, but I kept coming and bringing you out. Yeah, I think for the first two days, I don't know if yeah. you instantly noticed, but that uh, but I noticed it became a pattern, different. and then I then I did call you out, and I did say you need to come out, and we need to speak. What's wrong with you, and why are you doing this? And I remember he said that he's feeling very low, he's feeling depressed, he doesn't know what's happening. So he had closed the. Uh, by feeling depressed again, I just mean that I was feeling symptoms of depression, and, and uh, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
See, we are just talking yeah. as a thing. We are not give, we are not uh, talking on any clinical aspect here, mm-hmm. so we are not even getting on that aspect. We're just talking as a mother and son what we went through, and when we went through it, and uh, I kept going and asking him to come out. He was refusing, and then eventually, I once just barged into his room. I opened the curtains. I stopped the sad music that he was playing. Do you remember? Yes, I was very <laughs> bugged by that. I turned off that music because that music is obviously going to make me I mean, was... more depressed. <laughs> no, I don't want it to justify it. I opened the curtains and I just told him to get out of bed. And I brought him out and I said, come and sit with us. And he said he's like really bored. He's frustrated. He's sitting at home. He doesn't know what to do. And but I think the majority of the reason, I think quite so a few many, people felt many, that yes, Because yes, I mean, 100%. I am personally an absolute extrovert. And I agree with you. So many went through it. But when he went through this, I just took that bold step and I just fought my way in. I did not wait for his excuses. I did not wait to listen to his thing. I knew he needed some kind of adult to step in and pull him out of that zone. And I did it. But again, this and helped me in my case. So like for others, yes. just look at like, the child. Because not always... Well, the fathers, just think yeah. about yourself. No, I'm just saying that. Barging in doesn't help with everyone. It not barging in. So when I say barging in, I didn't mean to say that I just... Uh, barged in like literally barging in is literally if you look at it it's like someone storming into the room I just storm into the room I open the door and went into the room there's a ground rule in my house that nobody can lock the doors just in case of an emergency or anything so I opened the door I went into the room I asked him to come out and that became a mandate that he needs to step out and then, then when I realized what yeah, I started spending a lot of time on the balcony and in yes. the garden then I started pulling him out and I started giving him other things to do and I started pushing him out of it and he realized what he was going through. I had been telling him to do meditation, which he thought that his mother's lost her brains. But eventually, he had his counselor also telling him to do meditation and he came to me very sheepishly saying, Oh, you know, mom, <laughs> my counselor is also asking me to do meditation and uh, it is needed. So, see, depression is... It, it doesn't have to literally mean dip, depression, which is a, which is something which needs to be addressed as a taboo in society. The weather could make you depressive. A situation could make you depressive. That again, it's the state of mind, not the yeah illness. state of mind. It's not, not the illness, illness of course. Yeah. It's just the, it's just the environment. Just sitting and doing nothing at times could get depressive. Just sitting at home and not stepping out and meeting people can get depressive, and it could kind of play on your system. For teenagers, you need interaction. You need a lot of um, activity happening in your life and you need to be stepping out you need to you need to have a communication I I know if I'm going to push it a little more my son is going to be stepping and saying that you cannot say this you cannot say that and um, what is it called I would get yeah okay that's not going to do that uh, okay, what I'm I speaking get, about like, is uh, basically so not getting into zones but see I'm a parent I know that I know uh, uh, what a parent would feel and experience and uh, at times certain parents are able to communicate and at times certain parents they don't know how to deal with it because they're so stressed and anxious but nevertheless a parent is a parent and they each one have their own threshold and the way they look at the issues and how they're going to deal with it that is my thought I may be wrong I don't know so when you are not able to deal with it, it's good to ask somebody else to intervene. It could be your spouse, it could be somebody in the family, it could be a friend or straight away go and get professional help to come in. It could be a counsellor, it could be a healer, It could, if you need to take a step further, you could even get a psychiatrist. No, but see, the point is speaking about all of this, especially in, uh, I don't know how to specify a particular uh, geographic range because the stuff exists all over the world. Where there's a certain amount of taboo in the air about mental health. I don't think. And um, I believe it was Deepika Padukone who said in one of her interviews, if I'm not wrong, or in some of she was speaking, where it made a lot of sense. I, I can't quote her exactly because I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was something on the lines of if you can call someone and say that you're feeling a little sick today, or that you're feeling a little, um, you have a cough, you have a bad tummy, you have a headache. Why can't you call someone and say, uh, my mind is sick today? Why can't you call someone and say, I'm, I'm feeling low in my mind? It doesn't necessarily have so, to be So yeah, okay, on that, on that it point, can be I have it with my friends, uh, be it with my school friends, be it with a friend that I have built over the, over the years of my meeting people. I tell them, 
I tell them one thing. No, I'm not saying, I tell I'm them not you. So, no, why can't we say it? So, there are people ready to say it. So, when we discuss, we yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, see, I'm not speaking about you particularly. Not me, me, I'm just saying. Because I don't say it. There are many times you call see, me down. I, I, so I, you call me to I've encouraged you to identify it and say it. So, I'm saying that yeah, it I'm can't be inculcated. You can't say it's a taboo. You can't say it. It is a taboo. It's maybe just as it's not that there are some mindset. Yeah, it's a it's a just it's a to be a taboo. No. But mama, there are like people who feel like it's something which is a but big stigma. But you know, there is something I I would go across, and yeah, today I have worked so much on myself that I can actually sit across and say yes. I, at one phase, I went through depression, but maybe five years back, if someone asked me to say that, say that I wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have said it, and I would have cried. Yeah, that's the taboo, and that's the stigma. About it. No, it's not a taboo. I don't want to bring it out and speak and speak. No, and speak it's people. it's a, no, no, no. It's as simple as what. No, I mean, okay, I don't know what the reason you weren't able to speak to people about. No, it. I don't yes. want to speak about. But many listen. people want to. No, 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 I understand. Many this. people, <laughs> many people would like find it hard to speak about their own mental health because they believe that there's something not normal about not being okay mentally. I've heard people use the use the words like crazy when they're about depression. I mean, that has nothing to do with like genuine. You can't. Really? Yeah, I've heard people calling people but crazy because they're depressed. Crazy. I've heard people calling the other person confused just because they want to go to a therapist. I've heard people saying, "Oh, you don't need to go to a therapist. Uh, you're uh, confused." So it's it's happened. It happens. And, Confusion uh, is a state of mind, son. No, but then they say that. Okay, and what about people say? Okay, what about people saying it's my generation which wants to go to therapy and everything, and back in the day it didn't exist. That's another example of a taboo. No, that back, is a taboo they, they because back say then, because that's the belief. I don't know. it's a taboo. No, but then because back then, those days it was there. Are you telling me depression did not exist back then? No, I'm saying it was there. It was very but, much there. But depression was dealt with in a different way. Yes, and that is because of the taboos of approaching a mental. Okay, like back in the day, say if you wanted to go to therapy. This is going to be turning out to be quite a fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point is, uh, uh, the point no, see, is, see, see, uh, no, one second, one second. No, uh, no you what I'm trying to say is, back in your time, if uh, I mean back when you were a kid, is what I mean. If someone had to go to uh, seek professional okay, help, and and no, I'm not saying they didn't exist. They did exist. But you have to admit there was even more of a taboo. You couldn't just openly. Oh, okay, again, I can't. Speak. No, openly we couldn't go across. I agree with you. I'm That's because people would always look at you like, oh, something's wrong with her. But there's nothing wrong in seeking professional help for your mental. Nothing is wrong. I don't agree. Because if you, you can go to it for a physical state of mind, you can go to the doctor because you have a cold. But you yes, can't go to so, the doctor because you so you're feeling. Low. Let us convey a message here instead of getting into a mother and son debate on it. We'll keep a debate for another time. You do your YouTube video with that debate. Okay, so the point here is, first and foremost, have an open communication. Can you see how much my son rattled? He rattled non-stop because this is very dear to his heart. He thinks that um, there's a big taboo. No, because I personally, that it's not there. I stand for. I just feel it. each one have their own belief and perception, and each one have a way of doing it. But nevertheless, this is a debatable topic, and let's not get into the details of it. There's one thing which I want to work towards: is just like clearing the taboos around mental health. I'm happy and I wish, uh, please do it all the very best and support you. But here comes the points. In case you're feeling upset, in case you're feeling lonely, in case you're going through something and you feel you're not able to reach out to your parent, please reach out to your teachers. Reach out. If you have an elder brother who's way about 20 or and is mature or elder sister or in case you have an uncle or an aunt or an or elder sibling. Elder sibling or any family elder, anybody, grandparents, or maybe you have a counselor in your school who you you could reach out to without any hiccups. Whoever it is, do reach out. Ask for the help. It is essential that you get it. Or even a friend you trust. You can. There's always no. You, you like don't have to ask for a friend from a uh, help from a friend, but you can always like reach out to a friend. You can tell your friend what you're feeling. It's always good. It to is. Help. It is. It is good, and Anyone. it's always good to have somebody there for you. And don't get carried away in the do's and don'ts and I can't do this, I can't do that. Oh, I'm not sure about this. Please don't get caught in any of that. I think most schools, majority of schools definitely do provide yes. a counsellor. So. Yes. I did recently give a talk show about it. And there also I said it's not a taboo, it's not an illness. It can be addressed, it can be healed, it can be worked on. So do not take it as you cannot do it, I cannot do it, I'm not supposed to do it, I cannot speak about it. Reach out. Yeah, reach mental out. health is something which everyone deals with. And also a simple, a simple like 
I'm okay, it's not a simple, but it's just something like okay. a sentence <laughs> which says Let's you are not alone. Yeah, but because a lot of people feel they're alone. Thing again. No, a lot we, of people feel. I, we can have everybody in here feel lonely. So. No, that's not what I mean. I mean let's, that let's people, people assume, people assume that the men, their okay. mental health feelings, only Fine. they are feeling and no one else is feeling it. I, I told you uh, this is very touchy for my son and uh, as he's excited to speak about it, I will have one more talk with him. Maybe I should make a video. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said I'll join that. Maybe my, my journey with mental health. Of course. Yeah, sure. So, on that note, I want to wind this session. I want to know what else you would like us to speak about. I hadn't planned to prolong this mother and son duo for this long, but this is my episode four. I I would do one tomorrow. We're coming to your end and let's see what my son's goals and what am I going to be motivating him for. And maybe we'll do one for the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see. If we get more questions, if we get more uh, things, we would take it a little more. Demands, we will do more in case otherwise we take a break and we will do it again. So, but we would, we would come back, the both of us together. Um, I'm waiting to hear from you all. I thank you for joining in. I thank you for watching and um, your feedbacks mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Do reach out in case if you need any support, any help, any guidance. We are all out here. And I think I'm training my son good enough soon. Soon he's going to be out there. So until then, thank you. Namaste. I'm Jaya Palashree from Samskara Healing and I wish you a good evening. Take care. Hasta pronto.